Okay, at what angle would the reflection of the sky coming off the surface of a pond completely vanish when seen through a polarized filter? Um, so uh, this is basically alluding to the polarization angle. Uh, and let me say a few words on that. Now, um, we um, we know from the law of reflection uh, that the angle of incidence has to equal the angle of reflection. So if light is reflected off a surface, theta i has to equal theta r. Uh, so, and we know that the angle of incident, if the angle of incident is equal to the angle of polarization, is theta p. Uh, most of the energy will be reflected of the surface of the pond now uh, the so that means the angle of reflection has to equal the angle of polarization so if we replace a Polaroid perpendicular to the plane of vibrations of the polarized light then the light does not reach the viewer or the observer which means that the uh, reflected light will vanish um, now so th this is sort of the uh, conceptual part of this so what so this angle let me let me say a few words about Brewster's angle uh, so let me draw a little diagram here. Uh, let's say I have, uh, this is my reflecting surface. Uh, not an artist, but I'll try to do my best here. And let's say we have some kind of sunlight, let's say, unpolarized light, and that's incident. And that is incident on this uh, surface, at the reflecting surface. And so it's going something like this. And so uh, this plane here will be the plane of incidence. Let me draw the plane of incidence. So the plane of incidence will contain this ray here. So, so let's say that this is the plane of incidence, okay? And uh, let's say that this is the normal here. So this is the normal. Okay. Now, so you could polarize this either partially or totally by reflection. How do we do that? Now, if you, uh, if this light is incident on a reflecting surface between two optical materials, now, for most angles of incidence, uh, the waves where the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of incidence, meaning uh, uh, perpendicular, so this is the plane of incidence here in red. So this is plane of incidence in red. So the uh, waves for which the electric field is perpendicular to this plane, in other words, coming into and out of the screen here, or another way to say it, that's parallel to the reflecting surface. Uh, this is the reflecting surface here in blue. Parallel to the reflecting surface. So for most angles of incidence, the waves that are perpendicular to the plane of incidence, i.e. parallel to the reflecting surface, are reflected more strongly than those for which the E lies in the plane. So then we say that the reflected light is partially polarized in the direction perpendicular to the plane of incidence, meaning going into the page here on this red line, into and out of the page. Now. There's one particular angle of incident called the polarizing angle. 
that's theta p, for which the E that lies in the plane of incidence, so meaning like the E has two components, uh, one let's say into and out, and one let's say in the plane of incidence. Let me change the color on this. So we have two components. We have one going in and one like this. So if, if I, so this is theta p, this is the polarization angle. The light is, so the light for which E lies in the plane of incidence is not reflected at all, but completely refracted. refracted. So uh, this guy goes down like this. And let's call this theta R refracted okay and uh, so so that means some of this will be going into and out of the page so since this is sort of like 3d I could I could do this and I could do this so some of it is reflected and at the same angle of incidence for which the E is perpendicular to the plane of incidence is partially reflected and partially refracted. Now the reflected light is completely polarized perpendicular to the plane of incidence, meaning what I get out of here What I get out of here is completely the component of the electric field that is perpendicular to the plane of incidence, meaning going in like this at 90 degrees. Uh, this component was basically, uh, so this is going, perp so this guy is at 90 degrees with this guy, with the plane, with the plane of incidence. So, uh, uh, so I, I hope that this is clear here. Uh, so the plane of incidence would be some like would be this red plane would be something like this, uh, where this guy would hit out like this. So there's a 90 degree angle here. In other words, if I tilt this, and this is the plane, this would be at 90 degrees here. So this is the plane of incidence, and this is the uh, reflected light. It's 100% polarized perpendicular to the plane of incidence. Uh, now the refracted light we said is a mixture of the component parallel to the plane of incidence, which is, which is all refracted because none of it was reflected and the remaining is the perpendicular component. Now, uh, so uh, what happened is this guy Brewster found out that when the angle of incidence is equal to the polarizing angle, the reflected ray and the refracted ray are perpendicular to each other, which means here we have a 90 degrees between these two. We have a 90 degrees. Uh, and so in this case, if this guy here is theta p, then this guy here has to be theta p. And since these two are perpendicular, this has to be theta p. And we can see from the geometry that the angle of refraction has to equal uh, 90 uh, minus theta p. Sorry, this is not what this is. Uh, so if 90 minus theta p.
Okay, the R has to equal. And uh, of course, that's because the remaining 90 degrees has to be split between uh, theta r and theta p. And so now we know from uh, Snell's law, like uh, let's say we were here in uh, uh, Na above the this reflecting surface, Na, and here we're in Nb. We know from Snell's law of refraction that N A sine theta p has to equal N B uh, sine theta r, and uh, so this will be N B sine theta uh, r is just ninety minus theta p. So replace it here. N A sine theta p and now uh, we know from trig that sine 90 minus theta p is just cosine theta p so this becomes nb cosine theta p has to equal sine theta p and a divide both sides by cosine we will get n a tan theta p has to equal to n b which means tan theta p has to equal n b over n a uh, n b was the uh, transmitted medium it's the medium through which the uh, incident wave refracted so this is you can we can call it n transmitted if you like to generalize it a little bit more and na is the incident medium so that's the air of the above the reflecting surface so this here is called brewster's law or brewster's angle brewster's law so this is a bit of a discussion slash derivation on the Brewster angle and how it, how it came to be. You could be a wave model using Maxwell's equations, but I just did it the uh, basic way. So uh, getting back to the question at hand here now, the, the question, uh, I mean, if you know all this, then this question is a straightforward application of that um, because it's saying, uh, at what angle would the reflection of the sky coming off the surface of the pond completely vanish when seen through the Polaroid filter? So, uh, so that means if I, so, so the angle of polarization, it, it needs to be coming at the angle of polarization, uh, which we said, so now I'm going to solve the question here, tan theta p has to equal n transmitted over n incident. Uh, that's the polarization angle. And we know that we are transmitting through uh, 1.33. So that's 1.33 over one. So theta has to equal inverse tan 1.33. And this is equal to 53.1 degrees. angle uh, at this angle at the polarization angle the reflection of the sky coming off the surface of the pond will completely vanish when you see it through a Polaroid filter
and again the reason is because of what I explained uh, because at this angle uh, the only reflected ray would carry an electric field that is perpendicular to the plane of incidence and no other uh, uh, no other components for the electric field will be allowed to pass through the uh, the uh, Polaroid filter uh, and therefore will be blocked